Owen. I'm here with my lab mates uh, Cody, uh, Mike, and Sun Kim, and we're representing uh, UPenn. Uh, our proposal is called PR2 Grasp from Perception and Reasoning to Grasping. Uh, the proposal was led by my advisor, Max Likachev, and uh, it also includes uh, these seven other professors here. So there is a lot of work that we're uh, planning on doing from all different labs, and uh, I will be presenting uh, uh, the work from the other professors that aren't here, and uh, it, they'll just be high-level presentations because they don't have many details from their slides. Um, Something that is cool about Penn is that we've been using raw since the beginning, since 0.4, about a year ago. Uh, here are five major platforms that we use uh, that run ROS. And uh, we also have a ROS lab for uh, master students, uh, mechanical engineers who are afraid to install Linux on their laptops but want to become friends with ROS. So uh, they uh, really appreciate the fact that they can do it, uh, become friendly with Linux and ROS before they install it on their laptops. These are the eight major uh, goals, research goals that we have for the PR2. The first project here is planning for autonomous opening of spring-loaded doors. Uh, last summer I was here at Willow and uh, I worked on with Sachin Chita uh, uh, planning for opening of regular doors. And uh, that was great and all, but there are a lot of doors uh, that are spring-loaded. Spring-loaded doors are all around us, fire exits, bathroom doors, and so uh, we want to be able to open those as well. So uh, we want to extend the search-based planner that we wrote last summer to be able to open spring-loaded doors, and it adds challenges. Uh, these challenges are that you can't just swing the door open, leave it there, and then have the PR2, PR2 go through it. So uh, now uh, we're looking to create a principled approach, uh, pretty much extend our previous planner so that it could complete a full motion uh, to open the spring-loaded door, either with one arm in the base or two arms. Um, and the cool thing about the planner is that it's able to plan a collision-free trajectory for the complete robot. Uh, we want it to also be able to handle right-handed doors, left-handed doors, or cabinet doors, or any form of door so that it's not hard-coded. We don't need any more hard-coded algorithms out there. It's just gonna be a generic door planner. So this is the PR2 pushing open a door from last summer. This is PRF, I believe. This planner is also capable of pulling open doors, but for the sake of time, we're not gonna show that here. Uh, this is some haptics research that we're planning on doing, transferring natural handheld objects between PR2 and human and the PR2 and other robots. So I find this pretty cool because I research manipulation and I just think about getting the gripper to the, to the goal pose, but uh, I have no clue what happens after that. So we're looking to make interactions between the PR2 and humans more natural, such that there isn't an awkward pause once you get the PR2's gripper to the goal uh, and the human has to try to figure out hey, when should I try pulling uh, this object out of the gripper, uh, or how to, how to have this social interaction that's normal between humans, uh, how to make it normal between the human and the PR2. This project is a project by CJ Taylor, who's here. It's the Pinocchio project. The goal is to create a form of teleoperation for the PR2, such that uh, using a motion capture system, you could have a human being do some action, and uh, it will be mimicked uh, accurately by the PR2. Uh, and we, at Penn, we have two pretty nice Vicon systems. So I think the goal is to use the Vicons in the beginning and then move over to a, uh, a more realistic form of mocap so that uh, it could be used in a home or whatnot. Last summer, uh, Mark Yim was here, and he made a, a changeable end effector for the PR2. Uh, and his goal for these coming years is to continue that and make some uh, standard interface for building a PR2 gripper and then uh, having a good, robust way to change the gripper on the fly depending on the task. So there are many challenges with uh, doing that, and you can see them here. All right, there's two basic parts to uh, changing the indicator. One is putting the current gripper away, um, leaving the uh, forearm open to attach another indicator. And then the, the second part is to attach that second indicator. The tricky part about Attaching the second end effector is inserting the that stub into the, the gripper, and uh, the way we did it was by um, actually just pre-recording the motions of the arms. 